Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. And you might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is a bit of an exciting video. <laughs> some of you might be able to see what's in front of me. And I haven't done an unboxing for a very, very long time. I've spoken to some of you, so some of you knew that this was happening. I am obviously sitting down with a different, different ambiance today, but big box that we need to get opened up. I do have another unboxing that I did for some substrate that I got from Soil Ninja. I will probably attach it into this video, so this might be a bit of a mammoth video. Uh, I will, as always, try to add chapters down below, so if you want to skip to certain parts, you can. But yeah, without further ado, let's dive in. I want to give you some background first before I open up this box. Apologies for looking maybe a bit too formal today, but I am between meetings, but I'm a bit too excited. Interestingly enough, this unboxing isn't risky if it stays in the box, but I'm just too excited and I want to open it up and I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. This is one for the Substrate Geeks. So I finally got bit by the bug that is Soil Ninja and I spoke to the team from Soil Ninja when I was down in London for the plant swap event that was organised by Emma from Good Growing and I had a chance to talk to them about their products so I thought it was kind of cool because I kind of went and did the whole kind of but you know I'm kind of in a big house I'm not in the city I can mix my own mix. Why would I go with yours necessarily? And they were talking about things like price, the quality. So I'm just like, you know what? Don't need to tell me twice. So I ordered some, and by the way, this isn't sponsored. I ordered this. I paid for my own money basically. But I thought, let's unbox some of these things together and have a look. Because I've heard so many things about the guys who sold Ninja and their products. I thought, why not? Let's see. I always need materials. And as you can probably guess, I needed this because I'm getting the big, plant order getting delivered, if all goes well after several delays, next week. As I said, this might be one video that will have both of them on, or it might be two separate videos, I shall see. So a first box, and there's two boxes, and they are both very, very heavy. So let's have a look. I've opened them just because I was kind of curious. They've got a nice little thank you card as well, and they talk about things like their products bioactivity, the fact that they use premium ingredients, and that they're there to help as well. And they were really, really, really helpful because they're just like, I want to buy some things, and I kind of messaged, and I spoke to one of the teams there, and they're just like, you could do this, and this is, this is really interesting to try it for these reasons. And we recently did a blog post about this, and you can see about all the benefits here, and I'm just like, great, sold. So let's have a look at what I got and what has arrived. So first one, and I saw this at the event and it was awesome, is there, and I thought I went, I think I went for some of the smallest bags of this as well. This is the five liter sphagnum moss and I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see, sorry about all the glare from the ring light, but it's very, very cool and it feels damp and it feels alive. I don't know whether or not it is, but it's kind of, got some pinks and some greens and I think they do kind of like really push this as their pink sphagnum moss but I saw this and I got to experience this at the event and I'm just like oh that's really good quality sphagnum moss so that was good so I'll put that down and then first one other thing is sorry <laughs> there's no graceful way of doing this uh, I went, and I think, so this is the five liter bag of bark, and I'm pretty sure I bought, I think anyway, I bought their larger bark and their smaller bark. I think this is probably going to be the larger bark. So this is kind of orchid bark, essentially what we kind of usually call orchid bark, but really, really cool to use when I'm doing my own soil mixes. Oh, and I'm super excited about this one because it's the one that really sold me on I, I might as well try it. And I think when I saw it, it was cheaper than the kind of one that everybody knows and I've talked a lot about on my channel, which is Lechuza Pon. They do their own semi-hydro mix. So I got an apology. I don't know what the quality of the sound is going to be like on this one. I got 
the semi hydro mix, which actually, if I bring it in, it doesn't look too dissimilar to the choose upon. And oh, this is really interesting, actually. I'm looking at the back and it's saying, stop. If this is the first time you're using semi hydro, please view our guide on their website. So that's kind of cool, actually. And oh, and to be fair, they've got a QR code that you can scan and go straight to the website. That is kind of awesome because I know a lot of people when even me, when I was first starting my journey, and just that any resource that I can find will make my life a bit easier. But yeah, this is really, really cool. And it's interesting because the zeolite on the Lechuza Pond is like a neon blue. And this one's almost like a greeny blue. I don't know whether or not that's going to pick up on the camera. But yeah, very, very, very cool. And this is the five litre. I didn't go for the big bags because I am me and I wanted to try it first, see if I'm comfortable with it. And I think it was the biggest bag when I kind of related back to what I pay for the big bags of the Chooser. And I think actually their big bags is bigger than the Chooser one, the one that I can get anyway. But yeah, very, very, very cool. And I think I bought both forms. So there's a fine, um, Hydro semi hydro mix, which I think this is the final one. I think this was part of my first question. I'm just like, nah. so how does it benchmark? So is the find the same as the choose upon, or is the course the same as the choose upon, or is it entirely different? So I thought I'd get both and give it a try. And they're really, really good in what they were kind of the way that they present it because this one's saying it's compatible with Monstera, Philodendron, Alocasia, and Therium, Skindapsis, so Epipremnum, and more. And I know on their website, one is more for certain types of plants, which have got the finer roots and the other, the smaller one, I think. And then the larger one is for things like monsteras, where they've got the chunkier roots. But very, very, very cool. Yep. What I was looking at before was a fine, because I've just seen the course and yeah, it is <laughs> considerably larger. I'll see if I can insert a clip when I open both of these so you can see the difference in size. This, I would say, is definitely larger than the Lechuza Pond. The small, the fine one that they have is more like the Lechuza Pond. Let me see if I can hold both of them. They're both five liters, which means five kilos. So my poor, poor hands. Let me see if I can bring both of those there and hopefully you might be able to see them. But yeah. And on both, they've still got the same QR code and links to the website. So very, very, very cool. And I cannot wait to try this because I have heard such good things. On to the second box, because it was two boxes. I was, wasn't quite expecting that, but yeah, let's have a look. So, oh, that's sweet. So another thank you card. And it's got my order sheet there as well, which is great. But I do like a good kind of postcard thank you card because they are also plantly ones as well. One of them looks like a gloriosum, the other one looks like a drawing of a kind of terrarium. Both really cool. But yeah, their packaging actually, I was going to say, I mean, it's substrate. So there's only so many things that could go wrong, but it's substrate within bags. So yeah. And I know before you all make the comment, I bought small, small bags because I wanted to try this. I know it's probably going to be a bit wasteful on the plastic, but I do promise the next time I'm going to be ordering, I'm going to be going probably for the largest quantities, mainly because I can store it. And I also know how fortunate I am with this because I know a lot of people in the big cities can't, but this is why some of these smaller bags are easier because you can probably have them in, in your kind of apartments rather than anything else. Um, right. Ooh. Ah. Oh. That's sweet. I, don't, I think they might have sent me a few things extra, basically. Whoa. Yeah, I think they did. So I uh, did not order that, but I will not say... I will. Yeah. So <laughs> they sent me some of their clear pots, which are spectacular. And I will definitely be trying this to the guys at Soul Ninja. Thank you so much. Like, this is exceptionally sweet. Uh, very, very, very cool. And I do love the fact that they sent me all the different sizes. <laughs> it's as if they know that I'm getting the order from Equigenera and I didn't have any pots. So <laughs> it's coming really handy. I have to say they're both, they're actually really kind of sturdy plastic as well. Nice because they're clear so you can see what's happening, especially with the semi-hydro. And they're quite 
tough plastic as well, which means that hopefully they will last quite well. And there's an awful lot of aeration in and around pots. I like the fact, I was going to say, I saw these on the website, and I did like the fact that they're kind of square. Yeah, space. <laughs> I have none. So enough with all the round pots, because they're really difficult to kind of place. These can actually get placed next to each other. And yes, I know that that might cause issues with pests, but what else is new in this place? Mealy bugs and me is what this should be called at some point. All right, let's move on to some of the packages. Okay. And some of these are now going to be smaller packages because they are components. And again, I wanted to try them, but a lot of their components were so much cheaper than I found them anywhere else. And I'm including Amazon into this. So if you're based in the UK, maybe do definitely check them out. If I'm not mistaken, worm castings. And for the people that are new here, this is worm poo. And before anybody says this, I'm not the only one that would get excited about this. I'm not the weirdo that gets really like giddy about like worm caca. But yeah, this is really, really good as kind of essentially a bit of a biological kind of leave-in fertilizer to mix in with your kind of soil type mixes, even the coca qua mixes. So this is really, really cool. Exceptionally difficult to find. When I was trying to find this on Amazon, A, it was considerably more. It wasn't coming from the UK. For some reason, it was coming from Germany. Really expensive for not very much. So cannot tell you how happy I was to find this. Ooh, and I got mixes as well because you know what? I want to try. I mean, this probably only do like a small pot, but I want to try. So I got their Anthurium mix, mainly because I want to see what it's like and I want to see how it benchmarks against mine. But really, really curious. Most of my Anthuriums are now grown in semi-hydro with Lechuza Pond. But I am very, very keen to try this. I do also like the fact that they've got at the back, their packaging is quite good, I will say. The, they've got a QR code and it kind of says you can scan the QR code and see which blend is right for your specific plant, which is kind of cool. And actually, I have to say, I was looking at their website. It is extensive in terms of knowledge. So very, very cool. And it also tells you what is in it. And I like that. That's a bit transparent because a lot of people are just like, it's is our own mix. Magic. So I mean, obviously, you can see it, but it's that kind of principle that a lot of companies will be like, we don't want to tell you because we don't want to make your own thing. I'm just like, most people can figure it out and give some goodwill because if somebody's buying this, they're not going to sit there and do it on their own. They want to buy the product. So Coco Qua, Bark, Perlite, Worm Castings, Activated Charcoal, and Zeolite. And I love the fact that they use Zeolite in their soil mixes because a lot of us that have been doing kind of semi-hydro, especially using things like the Shoes Upon, Zeolite is kind of an ingredient that we probably only came across when we were looking at things like Lechuza Pond. So the fact that they've got that in there and all the benefits that it kind of creates is very, very cool. That was actually the article that they sent me when I was asking questions. So they've got a really cool blog post that kind of explains zeolite in a bit more and about some of the benefits of zeolite. All of the packaging. Yes, I am that person that just dumps everything on the floor and then deals with it in a minute, but they will all be going into my recycling. Next, soil mix. Oh, I am so excited about this. Allocation mix. I keep seeing allocation mix all over the place. I know their one is really good, but I've never tried it and I've always had really good success. People that have been here for a long time will know allocations and collocations are my jam. Like, I know how to deal with them doesn't mean that I don't occasionally have some of them that throw hissy fits because they're allocations. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is really, really cool. And I do want to see it. So it's interesting because again, looking at and comparing it to what I would do, they also use vermiculite in theirs, which I did as well. And I'm just like, I don't know if anybody else does this. But yes, they do use vermiculite. Again, zeolite in this as well. So very, very, very cool. Again, they've got the, the, the QR codes to check if it's the right one for your plant. It's still going. Ooh. <laughs> so I may have bought the course, and I think I've got the fine one as well. May have bought course zeolites. 
as an amendment to some of my soil mixes because I do want to make some of my own mixes as well. So the point I'm trying to make is I bought both because sometimes you just might want to get like the pre-mixed stuff and some of the times you might want to mix your own thing. And I do love the fact that they as a company give you both of those options as well because they could have easily just said, no, these are our mixes done. But actually the fact that you can get the components from them speaks volumes. I really like that. I really, really like that. And I like them as a company. The, the more I see their products and the more I speak to them, really, really cool individuals. So yeah, very, very cool. I'll bring it in so you might be able to see. I know this might not be the most exciting video in the world, but hopefully the people that like get excited about Substrate <laughs> will appreciate this. Yeah, Zeolite. Very, very cool. And when I was talking to them, actually, the one thing that they did say is their zeolite isn't quite as dusty as the choose upon one and obviously they were kind of saying zeolite is going to be dusty to a certain point but possibly less washes or flushes good for me Ooh, and this is for the people <laughs> that have been hearing me say this for a while <laughs> i am a man of my words Clay pebbles, or otherwise known as lecta. And really interesting with these ones, these are small. They're not big. Like every single one that I've seen in terms of lecta tends to be huge. So very interesting. I'll bring it in so you might be able to see. These are considerably smaller than I've, the ones that I usually see. I don't know if they come in sizes, but this is the first time I've seen the slightly smaller one, which was always my hesitation with lecta, because I'm just like, if you've got something that's got finer roots, how is that going to work? I get it with the thicker roots. But how is it going to work? And actually, with a smaller clay pebble, it might. So, very cool. That's a pleasant surprise. We're still going. There's four more. In. <laughs> Somebody take away my cards so I don't keep buying everything that I find. Monstera and Philodendron mix. Interesting. Like at least from what I can see from here, and I'll bring it in a bit closer. So this one's got charcoal, zeolite, pumice, worm castings, cocoa bark, and perlite. And I'm not saying anything that you can't already see on their website. They're very transparent. I love that about them. I said that already. But um, yeah, very, very, very cool. And it's a good mix. That's really, really interesting. As I said, these ones are kind of gone and just went, ooh. Because it's we all get really comfortable with our own mixes, but sometimes it's a bit interesting to kind of see it's just like, I know this, I know this works. Could it work better? And am I doing something differently, basically? So sometimes seeing other mixes can give you ideas. You might not be bothered to do your own and you find that this is really good and you can't replicate it. Fair, that's their recipe. So buy it from them. But it might give you some indication and kind of ideas. It's very, very cool. I will say I do like this when companies do this because they've got their website, they've got their Instagram handle, and they've got their email very, very prominently at the back of the packaging. That to me says that they're kind of very confident in their products because they're not trying to hide away. If there's any issue, obviously they're kind of saying, look, reach out. We're happy to talk to you. I like that. I like that. Ooh, more. Ooh, worm castings. Number two, did I buy two? Maybe I did buy two. Maybe I bought two liters and I think maybe that's how it comes. Maybe there isn't a two liter bag potentially, but yes. More worm poo. Ah, uh, yes. So this is the fine bark. So I think I bought the bigger bag of the chunkier bark because I'm used to using that, but I've never had fine bark. I don't know why I've never had it. It's just the pre-done like orchid bark mixes that you buy are always slightly chunkier. So I thought I'd buy like a slightly smaller one and test it out. Kind of cool. <laughs> Last one. Oh my god. This is awesome because again, this is another one of those components that I can find sometimes. It can be really expensive. I did another video recently talking about things that you can buy from pet shops. This came up as a suggestion from somebody in the comments. But activated charcoal. Very, very cool. Decent sized bag. Really wasn't that expensive comparatively to how much I was paying for stuff like this previously on other websites that shall remain unnamed. But yeah, very, very, very cool. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. I'm impressed. I will be trialing all of these and 
giving you my honest feedback as I usually do. But they all seem good, and so far what I'm hearing is good from everybody. There's things like things like soils and things like that. I don't think they would be going for as long as they have and have as much of a fan base if they didn't work quite well. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of one of those things that it would have been a flash in the pan. I think that's the expression. Apologies from the technically non-native English speaker. But yeah, the, people would have tried it if it didn't work. It, it would have died a death, if that makes sense, because if it didn't work, it didn't work. That's the one thing it needs to do. So I've got high hopes. But yeah, I shall keep you posted. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. So, <laughs> for the people that want the background on this, because I know some of you might have skipped forward to the actual unboxing, but for the people that want to know the background to this, and it might be the rest of the people that ordered around the same time I did in the UK. So, there was a point, I think towards the end of August, where on the Equigenera website, so this is obviously an unboxing from Equigenera Ecuador, not the European one as far as I'm aware, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this is what I could tell from the Equigenera Europe website, they don't deliver to the UK, I think. Otherwise I would have just ordered from Equigenera Europe and probably avoided all of this palaver. But essentially ordered towards the end of August, they had a great deal for a lot of the plants, some of the plants that I've been looking at for a long time, and a bit of a spoiler, if you watched my wish list video, a lot of those plants are in here. I did also grab another wish list plant that I've had on my wish list, which is the Philodendron Dean McDowell from a recent plant swap. So for the person who I swapped with, you probably know, but seriously made me so, so, so happy. But yeah, with this one, the story goes, uh, and I can hear, I can see the people in the UK twitching already because I've spoken to a lot of you over the last few weeks. We ordered a lot of these plants around the end of August. When I went onto the website, it seemed like the next delivery was going to be done to the UK around middle towards end of September. I think it was middle, beginning or middle of September, actually. Maybe I misread that. And that wasn't always the case. But so I put my order through thinking, you know what, I'm ordering it in August. Yes, it might be a bit risky because September starts to get a bit cooler here. But you know what, the plants should be fine. It shouldn't be that cold. Note that this video is coming out around the middle towards end of November. <laughs> so yeah. I got an email back saying, yeah, we've got your order and you should be receiving your plants around mid-October. And I'm just like, uh, I thought it was September. I went back and looked at the website and then it was also mentioning October somewhere. So I will give the company a benefit of the doubt and say that I'm the one that missed it with that one. And generally speaking, the reason why I went with Equigenera and actually a bit of information, I don't know how many of you might know, I've never ordered from overseas plants. I've always ordered from the UK. So this was a big thing for me that I've left for a very long period of time. I am very cautious by nature about a few things and I saw so many bad experiences and I'm not gonna lie, I'm assuming that for most of these plants I might be looking at chunks now and with a significant amount of rehab, but we'll touch on to that in a minute. With, yeah, so with this order that happened, that, that okay, October started coming round, no updates, no nothing. I'd kind of already told them as well. I'm just like, look, I'm going to be doing a bit of an unboxing with this. Can you just confirm that these are going to be the dates and all these things? Nothing. And this is my biggest issue with this because I ordered with Echo Genera because they are a very good company. I still think they are a good company based on what I'm seeing from the European thing. There was a bit of an issue with communication and customer service, I think, on this time, which again, I think is out of character for them based on what I've seen on a lot of other people's reviews before this specific order happened with the UK. Uh, we all got an update, including myself, after mid-October had been and gone, kind of stating, uh, you know what, there's some laws that have changed in the UK, so we're really sorry, it's been delayed, it will be later basically. So 
less than ideal because I know a lot of the only reason why they might have done this is because I know a lot of people chased them up on it. I know a lot of people cancelled their order at that point. I know a couple of my either subscribers or followers who had ordered over a thousand pounds worth of plants. They cancelled it fair dues because at that point you're taking a massive risk with the weather being what it is. Interestingly, we've been fortunate that it's been unseasonably kind of mild for an October and November in the UK. Annoyingly, today is one of the coldest days we've had so far. Uh, this box came in and it was freezing. But yeah, I did kind of message them. They kind of messaged me and they said, look, this is a situ. Sorry, sorry, they did. I think they did actually apologize. Uh, so I did ask them, just like, look, is there a heat pack that I can maybe purchase for this? I just like, no, we don't do heat packs. I think they may have done sometime in the past, but they did offer to put it in a, a polystyrene box. I know it's not great from the environment, but I needed to ensure that these plants came okay. And I'm sure I can find ways of using that polystyrene. I am a bit innovative when it comes to using materials that aren't recyclable in ways that could make them have a longer life, basically. But yeah, so I've done that. I don't know whether or not that's the case. I would assume based on the rigidity of this, that might be the case. Then moving forward to yesterday, where the I kind of went back and said, look, is there going to be a date? They're just like, yeah, around the 15th or 16th, you should get an email. I haven't got anything on the 15th. And I'm just like, they've left people hanging like this before. Talk to a couple of people that were saying that some people, they've reached out to them and said they won't be getting their order until December. So this is what I'm saying. I don't think the, yeah, I just think the communication with this whole order could have been handled a lot better because to be fair, the majority of people that I've spoken to would have been fine waiting. Most of them wouldn't have necessarily canceled or at least they could have said, look, you know what, can you hold them until April when it's a bit warmer? But most people would have been fine if the communication was on point. It wasn't. So <laughs> lesson to a lot of companies out there. I know it's not the most comfortable email to send over to clients, but a lot of the time people appreciate the honesty more so than you would imagine. But anyway, enough prattling on. This is a very long intro section, but I thought I'd get the, the gunky stuff out of the way first. Talking about gunky stuff, I don't know what I'm going to find. So we might see more gunky stuff. I've also got a list of what I've ordered because it was almost three months ago now. Again, ordered from Echo Genera because I knew that generally they deliver fast. Hopefully more the future orders moving forward now that this issue has been resolved with whatever law has changed in the UK, which I don't doubt, by the way. I'm sure something has happened. A lot of things have happened in the UK. Um, hopefully that will make things a bit better moving forward. But yeah, without further ado, let's get to unboxing. I've taken off all my details, so <laughs> uh, the internet. Right, let's dive into it. So I've got trusty scissors and knives. If anybody is offended by these things, please leave now and come back in a bit, basically. But let me open it up. So let me pick up the box so you can see the size of the box and you can see it in relation to me. As always, I've seen other other kind of unboxings of this and people are always surprised at how small this packaging is for how many plants are in there. And I have eight plants in here. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go in. I might speed up some of these sections because, yeah. The one thing I will say is the box seems really sturdy and the packaging, it feels like it wouldn't move around too much. So that is a plus. Very awkward and trying to get it unhinged. But, ah, there we go. we've got some release. Uh, this is gonna be a pick up and clear up later. Actually, before I put that down, Equigenera on the packaging as well, which I thought was kind of cool. So for the eagle eyed, yes, it is in polystyrene. So they did kind of follow through with their promise on that one. It is relatively good packaging. And yeah, let's continue on. 
these are bigger than I was expecting, and I'm kind of looking at my space. I knew that this was going to happen, that I was never going to have enough space, but I'm just like, I don't know quite how large these are going to be. <laughs> I don't know what's going to have to move. <laughs> I don't have any space to move anything. I know, first world problems, but yeah. Uh, some of these have even got labels on them, so that's kind of cool. Or maybe all of them have got labels. So there is a packaging slip, and... Yeah, so I can confirm it's eight items in, so which is good. So let's move into the first one. Which one is this one? So <laughs> we might have hit a roadblock already because based on what the label is saying, this is an Anthurium Pedatum. I am looking at my order, and the order slip from them is saying Anthurium Pedatum. Oh no, I did. No, I am talking rubbish. It. I did order an Anthurium Pedatum. That's <laughs> what happens when you receive plants in November, which you ordered in August. <laughs> right. Let's let's unpack, and hopefully, I won't make too many people cringe on this one. I do like the packaging, and I don't know whether or not you might be able to see there is holes around there, and there is. They've got a little label at the back, which is cool. There is also, I think, I feel a stick in there. So let's, I'm also thinking this came in soil, which surprised me. I would have assumed that this would have come bare root, but maybe not. Uh, let's have a look, shall we? This does look like it might be a relatively large plant. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This, oh no, I did order the pedatum. This is the fingers one, which was on my wish list, if I'm not mistaken. So looking a bit flat at the moment, but it's a relatively mature plant. And you can see the leaves. I'm going to have to kind of like, luckily they're long and large plants, so I can kind of bring it in a bit more. This is going to take some time for it to de decrinkle. But yeah, let me just keep going. So they are not in soil, but they are in sphagnum moss. And the sphagnum moss is looking a bit dry. However, what I will be doing with most of these, I'll do my usual rehab, especially for these ones. They're going to be going into a bucket of water for a couple of days, just so they can kind of perk up a bit. But yeah, let me show you the kind of root ball on that one. It's looking quite good. Uh, I don't want to disturb it too, too much, but it's looking healthy. I will update, I think, let me do all of the unboxing first, and I can always add B-roll on what the roots look like for some of these and add them at some point on the video, probably here. Um, and yeah, but it's really interesting because the roots on this, and I'll see if I can bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see, they almost look and this is something I find really interesting a lot of times with anthuriums. They almost look like they could be um, roots that you could find on a Phalaenopsis orchid, for instance. And I will say, okay, for the, for the people that get really, really precious, there's probably some cosmetic damage on some of these leaves. But to be fair, it's come a long way and they look spectacular. I'm trying to see... Uh, after the review that we did with uh, Tanya from the Equigenera Europe, whether or not these are covered in some form of spray pesticide, and I think they might be, but... Oh, and there is a new leaf that doesn't seem to have too much damage. And this is the Anthurium that looks like a hand with fingers, basically. But yeah, very, very, very tall. Very, very cool. So let me put this down and let's move on. So the next one, from what I'm seeing from the label, is one that I wasn't really necessarily looking for, but I found it and I'm just like, oh, this looks kind of cool. So this is the Philodendron heterocrespidon. And I'll see if I can add names, obviously, on the screen like I normally do, but this is another one that is sizable. This one feels a bit limp, but I might, it just might be me with my imagination. Let's have a look. And the interesting thing that I found with a lot of you that kind of were commenting when you've made orders, 
And do let us know down in the comments below. A lot of people said when they've ordered from Equigenera, their anthuriums come in and they all do really, really well. The philodendrons a bit less so, and I do have a monstera in here as well. So I am curious to see how that is doing. But the packaging is the same, by the way, with everything. Like the first one that I showed you, it does have those holes. Yes, the packaging is looking a bit slim at the moment. Ooh, this is nice. I even, again, I forgot what I've ordered. So let's have a look. The packaging, to be fair to them, this packaging is relatively easy to unbox. So I get it. And it seems relatively secure. Let's have a look at some of these roots. So the more worrying thing with this one is I can't see the roots, but it is sphagnum moss with some cocoa coir. But this is kind of what the leaves look like. Yes, there's a new leaf that was emerging there that has got uh, some cosmetic damage, but that's to be expected. The new leaves are always going to be, uh, but you can see here, and I don't know whether or not that's picking up some of that ruffling. This is definitely, I think the reason why I ordered this is because this is giving me the philodendron esmeralda dense vibes from behind. But so far, I have to say, this is very, very, very cool. Uh, you want to see a very, very uh, large spent caterpillar there basically but these are relatively substantial plants it doesn't seem like it's got any root rot but again i will insert clips of when i open these up and show you we might even depending on if, if you want i could always do a bit of an update a couple of weeks later after they've kind of acclimated a bit more and tell you how each one of these is doing. But at the moment, it seems okay. There is plenty of nodes. One, two, three, four, five nodes. So that's not bad. This is a full plant, which is kind of cool. Right, moving on to what looks like slightly smaller plants, still relatively sizable, but slightly smaller plants. <sighs> oh, and this is the plant that spurred this order because, and again, I think this was on my wish list video, but I wanted this and I'm really hoping, out of all of them, I really hope that this one specifically arrived well because I don't think I've ever seen it sold anywhere else. I'm really, really hopeful. Again, same packaging. Ooh, yes, it did, at least from what it looks like on the leaves. Uh, this is an anthurium, so I really don't want to be rehabbing it. I'm not good at rehabbing anthuriums at all. So, yeah. Decent roots, decent roots, is it decent roots? Yes, decent roots. Wonderful. So, let's get rid of that. This, oh, and it's a decent size as well. I would have liked it if it was slightly larger, but I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to tell. Do you know what this is? This is, and I had to, the sister plant to the philodendron esmeraldense. This is the anthurium esmeraldense. So still got some of those ruffles, and I'm assuming the name might be due to the location rather than the appearance, but the appearance is quite similar. I'm really hoping that I can keep this happy because, I mean, I had to. I mean, I mean. Uh, so yeah, I'm really hoping this enjoys growing in this space because it's one of those things you need to have the set, essentially, or at least I, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Maybe I'm weird, but the people that have been here for a while probably know that I'm a bit weird. It's fine. But yeah, let's move on. But super, super excited about this. Really good condition. Really, really good condition. Uh, I can't see any real significant damage. Yes, there's cosmetic damage here and there, but you know what? It's fine. It's got a little aerial root that's peeping up from there as well. But yeah, this is, this is good. And yeah, the roots look healthy. So that's a big plus. Right, moving on to the next one. What's this? Ha. So this is an interesting one. 
this is a replacement plant because um, a while back I went and yeah, did a video that I will link at the top there. I went to a plant festival in Leeds and met a lot of lovely people there and Equitanera was there, but I got a bit, anybody who's been to the UK and has been to an event where there's Equitanera, there is usually a mob around the table. And I'm just, I know COVID's a while ago, but at the best of times, I don't want that many people in my personal bubble. And there was a lot of, there was just things going on around that table. So I'm just like, um, just not. I'm just, I'm, I might just order online. And granted, I'm possibly slightly regretting that at the moment, but considering how long this took. But I did go and get a plant that I've been wanting to find for a long time from Jacob at uh, Grow Tropicals. And he did say, look, it was a, a relatively fresh, 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 <laughs> relatively fresh <laughs> propagation that was still rooting out of a philodendron serpents. And it was a good price, so I picked it up. Uh, me being me and me being stubborn, I'm just like, no, I need to put it in my own medium. That was a big mistake, it, that I have never had a philodendron rot out as quickly as it did. And again, this has got nothing to do, I think the plant was spectacular coming from Jacob and Grow Tropicals. It was me that decided to transition it too quickly, but I knew the risk that I was taking, and it was a relatively, it wasn't a dirt cheap plant. It, it, there was some cost to it. So yeah, I knew what I was getting into, but that rotted out and I really wanted it. So this, and I have heard stories from a lot of other people that it can be a bit sensitive. So this is one that I was worried about from day one, how it was gonna ship. I'm not gonna lie, I think this might need some rehab. I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, let's let's see. So yeah, philodendron serpents. Ooh wee. This is looking amazing. And this is a lot more mature than the one that I saw, uh, the one that I got from uh Grow Tropicals, but that's okay. Um it was a good, it was a good size when I got it for here, basically. So, and this was always going to be a slightly more established, larger plant because Equigenera. And this is one of the reasons why people purchase from them. They've got relatively large established plants. You don't have to be starting, don't get me wrong, some of these might all throw hissy fits and they might rot out, but again, I can always do an update. So, uh, interesting, the stem on this, which is now a lot more mature, it looks very, very similar to the philodendron varicosum. I'm really hoping it's not as pest prone as my varicosum was. So I will bring it in a bit closer so you can see the leaves. The leaves are really, really, really cool. So they do have some ruffling, but it is all about those hairy legs of uh, petioles. They are spectacular. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, five nodes. I'm wondering whether or not five nodes is their, their jam, basically. So there is a new leaf that was coming out. It is still kind of uncoiling. I'm assuming it's not showing any real signs of distress just yet, but I'm assuming there probably will be because it's been bashed around. Let's have a look at the roots. No. I think the roots might be okay on this one. Let's hope I don't turn it to mush. Let, let's see, basically, with this one. But yeah, and it's got some decent aerial roots. There's some caterpillars, which I might just kind of like the crispy caterpillars, I might just remove just because <laughs> people that have been here for a while know this. If I tend to leave caterpillars on plants, they tend to be covered with uh, maybe bugs, basically. So yeah. <laughs> But very, very, very cool. Uh, my water bucket is definitely going to be getting some use today. So the next one again might be one that I saw and I've never heard of before. And this is the Philodendron Rubri Juvenile. And I had to just look at my order again and just go, is that the name of the plant? Or is this like philodendron rubri and it's a juvenile? But no, it's apparently rubri juvenile. So let's see what it looks like again. I, I mean, I guess if we, if you want to look at, and I do try as much as I possibly can, it might not seem like this in this video because it's mainly me whinging, but I do try to see silver linings whenever I can. And I think the silver lining in this situation is when it's been that long since you've ordered, Everything is a bit of a surprise. I'm just I don't remember what I ordered. Oh, so there's some extra packaging in this for the eagle-eyed. So there's some paper kind of like 
ripped up paper in there. And let's have a look. Let me take off the, the tag. Those tags are really, really quite useful, actually, I think. So let's have a look. So we're getting to slightly smaller plants now, which is fine. I mean, these are still sizable. This is technically a medium sized plant. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Is this, did I order a Choco Red? Maybe I did. Because this does look, and it's a philodendron. Yeah, it's a philodendron and it's got kind of the standard red backs and it's got the velvetiness. Maybe I did, maybe I ordered a Choco Red. Uh, I will put a note somewhere to say if I did or not. Yes, this, and this is one that I know it can be quite sensitive. The roots, at least the ones that I can see peeking through, Seem okay? But yeah, this is very, very, very cool. And it's got loads of leaves. One, two, three. There's one that's gonna be on its way out. I can see already. So that one's kind of a yellowing leaf. Let me see if I can bring it a bit closer, but it's, I think from what it looks like, it might be the oldest leaf, but this seems like a very happy philodendron. So yeah, kind of excited about that. I don't know, I don't know if that's what I thought yeah, I don't, maybe it is. Maybe it is an El Choco Red. But, because the backs do look red. So it's kind of a burgundy. I always kind of thought that the El Choco Red is very, very kind of like bright red, but I might be wrong. But yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice surprise. It is kind of telling with this one that it had all the, the shredded paper in there as well. So I don't know <laughs> whether or not that one's a specifically sensitive one. And if it is the El Choco Red, I think that might be the case. I also know that a lot of people struggle to keep it alive. So let's see how quickly it takes me to rot it out. Hopefully I won't. <laughs> and I've learned from everybody else's experience, but let's put it this way. I'll be doing, I did a lot of research before I bought these plants, but I need to go and refresh myself again in terms of kind of the care that they all need. Most plants generally that I put into the conservatory, which is pretty much where most of these are destined. Oh, uh, I don't know where I'm gonna put them. That's a different story. That's a future memo problem. <laughs> but yeah, this is where they're going to live. So I'm going to leave the two plants that I think might have the most amount of transport shock based on what plant they are last. Uh, and let's go with another anthurium. We've still got three to go, by the way. This is this is number three. So let me just take the label off from this one. This has also got the shredded papers in there. Is this stuck? That was a bit stuck. So let me try and get all the paper off in one go. So, and this is one that I, I think this was a cheap one. So I just kind of added it towards the end. And I think some people do have this. This has also got good, really good roots, actually. I think this one will be a thriving. Oh, and it's, <laughs> it's an anthurium that has got thick leaves. This is, let me just remind myself, anthurium villanoarum, villanoarum, I'm kind of, probably butchering that, but it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves, seven leaves, and they are very, very, very tough leaves. I like, I think this is a relatively hardy anthurium. I might be wrong. Shout at me in the comments <laughs> down below if I am. <laughs> but yeah, I think this might be a relatively hardy anthurium, and I'm all about the hardier anthuriums if I can keep them happy. <laughs> the people that have been here for a while know that <laughs> one of the hardiest ones apparently and why it's a bit more readily available from the rare or slightly harder to find, I don't think it is that hard to find anymore, is the Anthurium clarinervium. I have never killed off an Anthurium faster than I did. Was it fast though? No, it probably wasn't. It did take about a year of me slowly killing it. I think I just overwatered it. I think it's an Anthurium that's meant for the underwaterers. But this one might be similar. Like this is one that, and the leaf texture is really interesting. I will echo what Tanya said on her video from Equigenera Europe, that there is kind of like a white powdery sheen. 
on some of these. So yeah, very, very, very cool. Smaller plant, but I'm okay with it. This one was relatively affordable as well. And let me have a look and I can tell you. Yeah, 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 this one was relatively cheap. This was $16. So this was, this was good. This was a good price, basically. So you might see me throughout just kind of looking at the timer on my <laughs> camera because I know how long the unboxing is from the video that I did on a soil ninja. So I am guesstimating this video is going to be around the one hour mark. <laughs> I am so sorry to future me that needs to edit this because that's going to be an epic one to edit. Right. Shall we go with an the last two plants now? Shall we go with an anthurium or with the monstera? Let's go with the anthurium, and this might shock a lot of people because this is one that I'm not that excited about, but let's see. And there's a tiny bit of a story with this one. Uh, one of my followers on here who grows this plant a lot saw that I didn't have one and I was very kind of cautious about getting one, and she's just like, you know what, I'll send you a little propagate that I've got and see how you get on with it. Hopefully it will do really well for you. <laughs> that didn't survive. I tried my best. If you're watching this, I really did. I tried my absolute damnedest and it just wasn't happy. So you know what? After talking about it for a long time, I thought I'd go medium size. I did not want a big one, mainly because I don't know where to put a big one. But yeah, again, this is a matchy matchy one. Can you guess what I'm gonna be bringing out of here? Because this is a, the one anthurium that everybody wants from Equigenera, and I'm assuming most people in the comments have already made the comment now. Oh, something's stuck. Let's have a look. Some of you might have been able to see it as well on the on the packaging. Let's get the papery bits out. And this is one that I'm fully expecting that I'm going to have to rehab based on other people's experiences. But <laughs> no surprise. I went for, oh, and that's really interesting. I'll show you the back of this, and this is how they did it. That is cool. I don't know if you can see how the two leaves are hooked over each other. So that was a really smart way of them kind of packaging this so it doesn't get damaged. But, and I mean, I, I do get it. I do get it. I understand why people really like this. I still think I prefer my Anthurium Vici or my King Anthurium. Let's see if this specific plant changes my mind. Let's have a look at the roots. The roots look healthy. Let's see how much of a beating this will take. And I think the reason why the other one struggles a bit is because I point blank refuse in a conservatory when I normally get 70 to 80% humidity to have to put this in a terrarium with 100% humidity. Uh, it's survive or perish basically in here. And I don't think this was a particularly expensive plant. I think that's probably why I went for the slightly smaller one as well. But let's see how it gets on. It's interesting as well. And I'm assuming this might be more in terms of the demand that they have on these plants rather than anything else, but do you remember some of the other anthuriums that we saw? They had a lot more leaves. This is the first anthurium that I've got, and granted it's a smaller one and it's a slightly cheaper one that has only got two leaves. So I'm assuming these are ones that they need to grow as fast as they possibly can in the company and then ship them out because there's a lot of people that are asking for them. Not that that's a bad thing. This is probably one of their best sellers, I would assume, based on how many people I know are always looking for queen anthuriums, specifically from Equigenera. So, Let's see how I get on with this. And again, as I said, this might shock a few people. I know this is a big, big wish list plant for a lot of people. I thought I'd give it a try. Because <laughs> I keep saying that I haven't ever ventured into the slightly more fussy plants like this one is known for. So let's see how we get on. By the way, just to clarify, after I've rehabbed all of these plants, every single one of them is going to go into a pond. So purely because every single anthurium that I've had in PON has loved life. So these will all be going into PON and hopefully they all enjoy that environment. I think most of mine tend to do quite well in PON. Sneaky suspicion that this one is the only one that didn't come with a label. This one had it written on the packaging. So you might be able to see if I bring it in a bit closer there and obviously it's going to be like mirrored, but it does say it on there. So, but yes. <laughs> I don't know if this is for all their medium-sized plants or if it's for the slightly more sensitive ones and I've got most of my medium ones are sensitive, but 
Oh, no, I think Ethereum Villanuarum had this as well. So I don't think that's a particularly sensitive one. So getting rid of that. Last plant, the Monstera, which I'm actually surprised by how big the packaging is with this. I would assume it's a lot smaller on the inside. And this is the one that I'm really thinking is probably going to go back to a chunk and I'm going to have to rehab this big time. Again, based on how tricky these are. However, this is one that was on my wish list and I never thought I was going to get. I know they've come down a lot in price. I think this was also one of the few Monsteras that they were selling at that point on the site that I wanted. So uh, I'm assuming most people have guessed already what it is now. And I could have got it more locally and it would have been the same price, but I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could get one from them that was a decent size. And this is, I am not going to get too excited and just assume that I'm going to lose all of these leaves. But can we take a moment to just appreciate the Monstera Oblica Peru? And it does have one, two, three, ooh, is that a bug? No. One, two, three, four, five, six leaves. And yes, they are looking a bit squished, but let's see how this goes on. It's got at least one good root that I can see. Maybe it does have more roots that are good. Yeah, I'm gonna have such fun. I'm not gonna do it on camera because I don't think people wanna watch me kind of untangling roots. This is gonna be my life for the next hour, I think at least to try to untangle all of these. But yes, last one. Let's hope this survives. I know most Monsteras are quite hardy, and this one feels, none of these plants have felt mush, basically. They all feel kind of, that they've just come fresh off the farm. So let's see how things go. But yeah, I don't know if I wanted to add anything else to this. Do let me know what you thought down in the comments. I'd be really, really curious. I know there's going to be a couple of unboxing videos back to back, one being mine, one being Tanya's, but I know a lot of people have been waiting for this one. Trust me, I have as well. I don't often do unboxings. A big order like this I have probably not done for at least a year or two. Buying, buying a house can be a very expensive thing, let alone also adding a puppy recently. So <laughs> to say I am broke is is just an understatement, uh, let alone the cost of living and energy crisis at the moment. But I'm, I'm waffling on. Um, hopefully you have all enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.